So how do you think that your intensity affected you when you were growing up? So I think one of the things about, you know, going to schools in in the 80s and the 90s is that there doesn't appear that there was a lot of understanding that a child could be gifted and it was a lot of, you know, Colin might be gifted, but you know, he's getting out of his seat all the time. He's always doing all these things. He's, you know, whatever. He's always throwing things off task and he's always forgetting everything. And he always only finishes 80% of stuff and he checks out if he doesn't like to do what he's doing. So like a lot of gifted, but rather mm-hmm. than gifted and, because mm-hmm. I don't know that at that time and even to many extents today that people can stomach the idea that children can have a lot of complex things happening in their minds all at once. So as a child, what that looked like is a lot of things that really, really stuck with me. Like I had a second grade teacher. Her name was Miss Barenbaum. It was my first year being in the gifted program. And I remember I was exhilarated by being in this gifted program. The first day I showed up, I didn't know what everybody was doing. Like, what are we doing? They had one word on the board and everyone was just like writing. I'm like, what are you all writing? <laughs> well, there was a word on the board like green. And I turned next to me, there was a kid. His name was Kyle. I was like, yo, what are you writing? He's like, green. You just write about green. I'm like, what are you talking about? But I guess every single day we started with creative writing. So by the end of the year, I had this massive journal of creative writing. So other grade second class, uh, second grade classrooms in my school were learning fairy tales. We wrote our own fairy tales. And I remember there was this book fair. And this is kind of an example of the intensity, right? Like there was this book fair where the top six books would be laminated. And I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, getting a book laminated, getting anything laminated in school was essentially like winning the lottery. There's nothing cooler than getting something laminated. So my book was laminated. It was going to be something I got to read at the book fair. Then one day in class, I was doing what I do, which is pure chaos, pure shenanigans, (laughs) laughing. I might have been rolling on the floor because I didn't laugh like a normal kid. If I thought (laughs) something was funny, I would probably like be close to dying of laughter, quite literally. (laughs) And Ms. Barabam said, you know what? That's it. You're out of the book fair. Mm. And I remember how that felt even today. And I just remembered like, why am I being punished academically for something that has nothing to do with academics? And when I think about what that looked like going forward, what that looked like if I missed assignments or if I got the wrong thing copied down or if I didn't get these directions, it was like, I got punished. I got labeled. Like Colin doesn't pay attention to details. Colin's not that organized. And Colin, you know, doesn't prioritize stuff. Colin's so sloppy. And nobody ever really thought to just kind of give me a helping hand or see what kind of supports that I needed. So I think the intensities that I had were kind of helpful and hurtful all at once. It was helpful in that, like, when I locked into something academically, teachers love to see an enthusiastic child that's thriving and doing what they need to do. I think the other part about that, though, is that they couldn't handle everything that came with that level of energy. 